You know that old proverb, there's more than one path to the top of the mountain? It's been said in a lot of ways, but the interpretation is usually the same. It's a proverb I'd never really taken the time to sit with. But recently, I'd made a decision. A decision that would rob me of four months of my dwindling youth. For the second time in my life, I decided it was time to go for a long walk. Three thousand kilometers running the length of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Was I stuck in a biennial through hiking habit loop? Was I following my life calling? Or was I just 27 and in the back seat of my parents' car? Yeah. This was a proverb I had no choice but to help with its seatbelt. Despite now living for more time in New Zealand than Japan, Mum had never been up to Cape Reinga. And Dad... I didn't need to go then. Got my trial. He needed a little more excitement in his life. Oh, come on. It would be the summer of 2021. A summer where Aotearoa was a haven. Free from COVID, free from lockdowns, big outbreaks, and any other option. New Zealand was a haven I couldn't leave. Kiwis aren't known to put travel within their borders first. Journeys usually begin by crossing the Pacific, but the one I was starting called for a three-way handshake with the Tasman. That's where we're heading. There the cables. Also known as Te Rerengawairua, this place sacred to Māori is where it's believed that after death, spirits return. Up over the vista, down the roots of the Pahutakawa tree, to return to the ocean. It's known as the leaping place of spirits and where my journey of Te Araroa, the long pathway of New Zealand, would begin. You ready, Mum? Yeah. Go water, go. Go water. Bound for the shore. Go river, go. Row river, row. What are we waiting for? Looking for. Ain't everything moving? Ain't everything. Back to the shore. Okay. 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 Easy breathing in your atmosphere. If you were to ask me how I'm doing right now, I would say not the greatest. Uh, 
this mic working? When we were on top When we were on top of the Okay, now let's get, um, what's your name, okay. where are you from, and what did you have to give up to be out here? Uh, name's Andy, haven't got a trail name yet, but hopefully that will come with time. Uh, from Bristol in England, and what if I had to give up to be here? Um, good question. Um, I don't know, I'm super fortunate that I've got the freedom to do it without actually, I guess, giving up leaving Wanaka and leaving my girlfriend behind in Wanaka. But um, otherwise, no, I'm fortunate that I've, I've got the freedom to actually do this and do it for me and, yeah, just uh, explore, I guess. And as twilight fell at the beach of the same name, I could feel the weight of expectation start to lift. I was here at the very top of an island in the corner away from it all. Out of this world. <laughs> so it's morning one, I just left camp. Uh, Feeling a lot better this morning. Feeling good, having met people, having good chats. And yeah, feeling ready to take on 90 loosely calculated renamed by European settlers Mile Beach. So it begins! 90 Mile Beach. A place impossible to run from my thoughts of doubt. My thoughts of why. Why was I doing this? And why was I doing it alone? I should have roped my younger brothers in. I should have left the gimbal at home. And I probably should have brought a stove. But it wasn't just that. It felt like I was missing something else. Like my focus was on the wrong things. I needed to change my angle, my perspective. Yeah, also my socks but to remind myself of what I knew to be the most important thing out here. We were meant to live together Walking hand in hand together We were meant to live together Second day on Nanny Ma Beach. Should be, uh, should be similar to yesterday. It's a bit cloudy though. Maybe I won't get as burnt. I did not think I'd be drinking a cup of tea on Nani Ma Beach. Hello, what have we got here? I think it's some purple kurma with carrot, some salt in there. We'll maybe do some polenta later on if we're feeling a little Mediterranean. And 
Andy's whipping up some fermented rice for his uh, <laughs> I am going to goon with smelly rice as a, as a <laughs> smelly <thing>. rice <laughs> oh man 90 mile beach eh yeah it's a killer <laughs> <laughs> Let me know what what are your names, where are you from, and what did you have to give up to be out on the trail? You guys ready? <laughs> Do I look ready? <laughs> yeah, ready as well. Oftentimes when we start, some things like it's very easy to think, well, am I really gonna get through this? Is am I capable? Like have mm. I done enough to get here? And often the answer is no, you can never really satisfy yourself. That's like same expectations, but I think um, something to do, uh, to do with like, yeah, maybe the defeatism, like trying to like shed that and wash that away is something that I've had to give up um, and really sit with it, especially on this stretch. It was kind of like a dream to do this and a privilege, I guess, to do something like this. Um, yeah, we're fortunate enough that we saved enough money and have the time in the world to, right now, thanks, partially thanks to COVID probably. <laughs> to do something like this, so I feel really grateful. But I totally see how in a different lifestyle or different place in my life, it would could be difficult for it to give to, yeah, you'd have to sacrifice a few things, I think. But right now it just feels like, wow, I'm so blessed and so like privileged to be here right now. Yeah. Last day, last day of 90 mile, how are you feeling? <laughs> Ooh, morale is medium, I would say. <laughs> Man, I am stoked. Nani Ma Beach. Dad. It was almost like I thought the hardest part was over. That old mate Jeff, our Te Araroa founding father, was a reasonable man. That walking the roads instead of hitching them wouldn't be that bad. I also used to think through hiking was a once in a lifetime kind of thing. I think we've got about three kilometers to go. Maybe four. Four kilometers to go. <laughs> it's been a long day, but. Yeah, we're almost there. We're almost there. Should I hitched? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was your name and how long have you been living in, around here? My name is Abai and it's been about three months. We were we ca we came back from Australia um, just two days before the lockdown in February. I didn't know there was anyone that walked from the top to the bottom until we came here. I was so amazed. I thought, God, you, you guys are just awesome. Was there a reason why you wanted to live out here as opposed to kind of like the big city or Auckland or anywhere like that? Yeah, just easier to live a more simple life. Less expenses means we don't need to work so hard. Not so many bills gives us more time for our spirituality, our spiritual practice. We're stuck in a man-made environment. It's, 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 it sort of confines our consciousness more. But when you're living in a more natural environment, sort of the consciousness more easily opens up. Look at the stars. Make sure you look up at night, see the stars, and appreciate the greatness of the universe that we live in. It's like a bi had looked deep into my soul with his organic vegan granola aura speaking directly to me. 
I mean, I guess he was speaking directly to me, but speaking the words he knew I needed to hear. Yeah, I just think you're going to get a lot of benefit out of being close to nature, and you get a lot of realizations from just that contact with the with the earth and the sky and the fire, and it just uh, very good for opening up the consciousness. Now I don't know if my half-eaten lunch from Subway Kaitai was giving me any points towards opening my consciousness, but Abai had a point that struck. My incessant questioning of why I was out there was stopping me from appreciating Fenua, this very land in which I was walking. I needed to listen to Abai and look up to the stars. Yeah, that's a full moon. <laughs> beautiful morning. Today we are heading into Ratia Forest, well known for its uh, mud. Should be a good one. I know I'm the first one through this morning because of all the bloody spider webs. Very sweaty. Look at the camera. How so old? My name's Goldie. How old are you, Goldie? Five. You're five. Oh. Joppy? Uh, my what? name's Joplin and I'm ten. <laughs> I'm Juno and I'm twelve. I'm Dee. <laughs> and I'm forty something. <laughs> and I'm Tom and I'm older than her. <laughs> and what, wait, what are you guys called? We're noodles called for noodles breakfast. for breakfast. <laughs> and we haven't had it for breakfast yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have <laughs> heaps of Wait, noodles. So, why are you guys out here on Te Araroa? Um, I don't know. Because <laughs> I have no idea. We are? Because your parents forced us to. Sitting in, uh, <laughs> sitting in lockdown in Sydney. <laughs> the North and no, Just no, deciding we wanted no, to move to New Zealand. Oh, that okay. is not true. That is not true. Why are we doing it, oh, girls? Because nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much the right reason. We actually we don't know. know. We can't remember the story or the time when we decided <laughs> it was time to want, hike the TA. But wasn't it because we wanted to? Um, we wanted. We hadn't done anything this big before, and we'd been practicing already, so we wanted to. Yeah, it. we wanted an adventure. And Mom would know everything. <laughs> Paul. So I learned I had zero grounds to complain about tough terrain and that little Goldie had wisdom well beyond her years. Thinking back to my final days before I left for trail. Lisa, yeah. go with passion. She was right. Mum would know everything. And uh, confident to yourself. We just made out of Ratia Forest. It's about 3 p.m. Uh, it's been a bit of a day. A lot of climbing, a lot of mud, but we're out. Back to the farm, back to the roads. You know, a wise wizard once said, all we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us.
how has it been living right on the trail? It's pretty good, although the walking bit is a little annoying sometimes. I usually guide them to either the campsite or the dairy because some people get a little bit lost even trying to get to the shop. Do you think you'll end up doing Te Araro one day? Yep, I think so. I just want to do the walk for a little bit of an adventure. Now, as much as it pains me to admit, New Zealand isn't a place of hobbits and elves and dwarves fabled in the world of Tolkien. Aotearoa has its own tale. Orange and black and white ones. Uh-huh. Yeah, my name's Terran Smith and we're on uh, McKinney Road in Mangamooka. Yeah, we set this um, campsite up about three years ago for the trampers to uh, rest here overnight. One of characters even he couldn't have imagined. Oh mate, Terran gave us some bananas. <laughs> Are you good? Mm-hmm. I can see myself. I can see myself. Mm. <laughs>